Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Technique Tuesday. This week we're going to be looking at how to train the calves with perfect technique. But before we jump into the technique itself, let's have a quick look at the muscles and biomechanics involved first. So with any calf raise, we're going to be performing ankle plantar flexion. So basically pointing your toes down, which is going to target both the two-headed gastrocnemius muscle and the underlying but actually larger soleus muscle. Now one important point to note is that the gastroc is a biarticular muscle, meaning it crosses both both the ankle joint and the knee joint. So it can also flex the knee, which is why it'll be active on leg curl movements. And because there is some degree of ankle plantar flexion on squats and deadlifts, the calves will be somewhat active there as well. But the plantar flexion range of motion is actually pretty small. So I think it's necessary to train the calves directly to maximize their growth potential. Also, because the soleus only crosses the ankle joint and not the knee joint, it's probably better targeted with a bent leg calf raise, while the gastroc is better targeted with a straight leg. However, both muscles will be active anytime you plant our flex, regardless of knee position. So I think using both a straight leg and a bent leg option in your training makes the most sense. Now, there are also a bunch of creative variations on the basic standing calf raise that I like, including the donkey calf raise, which you can easily set up on a Smith machine. And it's been shown in some independent EMG data to have the highest muscle activation out of the six variations tested. And I also really like the single leg calf raise for avoiding asymmetries from having one calf take over. Uh, but for our purposes here, we're going to be focusing on fundamental technique principles that can apply across all straight leg variations. And I'm going to be using a standing calf raise machine. Uh, but I think what really matters is that you have a straight leg, not that you're actually standing. So you can easily do these on a leg press or Smith machine if you don't have a standing calf machine available. So for the calf raise, I think there is merit in training across a variety of rep ranges. So anything from 6 to 20 or more reps. The most recent evidence on this suggests that both the gastroc and soleus are type 1 dominant, implying they may benefit from the use of higher reps. But because we're also taking the ankle through a full range of motion with the calf in a biomechanically strong position, I think it'd be negligent to exclude any low rep strength work. So I think splitting this up where you have at least one heavy day, where you work more in the 6 to 12 rep range, and then at least one light day where you work more in the 12 to 20 zone makes the most sense. Now with that said, because it is extremely easy to cheat on the calf raise, I think you really wanna make sure you put proper technique above heavy loading or anything else when it comes to the calves. And before anything, you wanna do one or two priming sets where you get used to taking the calves through a full range of motion with body weight only to establish a mind-muscle connection and get the ankle joint loosened up first. Now at this point, you'll wanna make sure that you're able to fully stretch your calves at the bottom. So if you're on a Smith machine, make sure you're standing on top of some plates or a riser. So you wanna set up with your feet pointing straight ahead. One 2011 study found that externally rotating or pointing the toes out may lead to more medial or inner gastroc activation. However, later studies found no significant difference in activation between various foot positions. So I'd suggest going with whatever feels most comfortable to you, which should be either straight ahead or using a slight flare. Now you want to make sure that you're setting up with the balls of your feet on the edge of the foot stand so you can get a true full range of motion. And you can do these barefoot if you feel a better stretch or contraction that way. But wearing shoes is fine as long as they don't impede your ankle mobility. So high top chucks may not be your best option here. Now before actually initiating the raise, you want to start by actively flexing your quads which is gonna accomplish two things. Now, first, it'll completely extend your knees, keeping the focus more on the gastroc. And second, it's gonna prevent you from cheating by getting your quads involved in the lift to help you sort of squat the weight up. So once your calves are in the fully stretched position, they should feel like they're being pulled apart, similar to how your hamstrings feel in the bottom of a Romanian deadlift. And from this stretched position, you wanna think about pressing your toes down into the ground as your shoulders rise up against the pads without shrugging. Throughout the positive, your knees and hips should remain perfectly straight and locked. And at the top, you wanna to pause for a full one to two second count while forcefully squeezing your calves. And the negative phase should last for another two seconds as you keep tension in your calves still resisting the weight on the way down. Now the most important pause comes once you've reached the bottom as springing out of the stretched position is gonna cause the highly elastic Achilles tendon to take over, carrying momentum out of the bottom and limiting the actual calf muscles contributing power. So you wanna pause for one to two seconds in the bottom and actually count this as one Mississippi, two Mississippi in your head so that you don't get lazy and ignore this crucial aspect of the movement. After the pause, initiate the next rep by flexing your quads, pressing your toes down as your shoulders rise up against the pads, actively squeezing at the top, 
and then lowering again under control to the fully stretched position. Now when it comes to the seated calf raise, most of the same principles apply. However, you may wanna use slightly higher reps since the soleus muscle is even more type one or slow twitch dominant. And you'll just wanna be careful not to use your grip to help boost the weight up or create momentum at the hips by leaning back on the way up. Now I personally find leaning slightly back and gripping the sides of the seat can really help me resist that temptation to cheat. Now, before we get into the common errors, I just wanna mention calf jumps as an additional exercise here, where you explode out of the stretched position when the calves are at their strongest. And this is gonna take advantage of the natural strength curve of the calves and really target those less abundant, fast twitch fibers. However, there is much more room for form inconsistency here. So if you are gonna give it a shot, I'd make sure you still keep the proper slow and controlled calf raise as your main bread and butter movement. So I think the most common error with the calves is just not using a full range of motion. Most people seem to just bounce between the concentric and the eccentric, allowing the Achilles tendon reflex to take the ankle about half the way up and then letting the calves fall back down without active resistance. And this is actually the worst way that you can train your calves because even though it may look like you're hitting them hard, it's really just your tendons, not the actual calf muscle that's doing the brunt of the work. So slow the movement down, get comfortable pausing in that fully stretched position and make yourself accountable to that one to two second count on every phase of the movement by either counting out loud or in your head on every rep. Going too heavy is another error that we see on many movements, uh, but I think it's especially problematic here because of just how technique sensitive calf training can be. If you're not doing the things we've been discussing here, I'd actually recommend starting with body weight only and really getting in a good groove with a proper controlled lifting tempo for at least a few weeks before you even start loading with any weight at all. And then as usual, once you do start loading, it should never come at the expense of proper lifting tempo and technique. So guys, before we go, I wanna shout out my calf science explained video. I actually just rewatched that uh, before recording here. And I think it adds a lot of depth to this video. As over there, I go into more detail on the scientific literature, and there's at least 15 studies cited in that video, and it's on its way to a million views. Uh, so I'll have that link down below. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. Don't miss the last two videos. I'll put them over here on the dip and the shrug. Hit up the button to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here next Tuesday. <laughs> ah, so, that's hilarious.